So this is just a quick introductory video. There's others on YouTube that kind of fill in the gaps. I'm just trying to do something that the others don't seem to quite catch. Um, so these zone valves made by Taco, spelled like taco, but apparently it's pronounced Taco. I've personally um, I find these things to be kind of strange solution to what uh, what they're trying to do but and uh, anyway moreover I haven't found them to be particularly reliable the hardware part is reliable which is the the valve itself but the actuator body which is called the power head um, I've had quite a bit of trouble with I've been in this house for three years the furnace was replaced pretty much right after I got it and the take ozone valves were both replaced and the the main one on this this one inch that does most of the work this this second zone rarely gets used the main one failed the the power had failed soon after i got the new furnace within a matter of months and now um about three years out it's failed again so the way, uh, just as a brief background, the way that this this particular furnace works anyway, and I think the way these are generally set up, um, well, it's not a furnace, it's a, it's a boiler, right? Um, is that the thermostat on the wall calls for heat. So whether it's the old-fashioned mercury switch that closes or the new programmable ones that say you know i need to be warmer it's you set the temperature for 72 the house is at 69 should come up those thermostats are connected to the this take ozone valve and what happens is there's a heater in here that heats up this plunger and there's another guy on youtube that's got a great video of what the insides of this thing look like and how it works um so anyway if the thermostat calls for heat, but this thing is not working. You're not going to get anything because this has a, uh, some switches inside that need to be doing what they're supposed to do. And in my experience, they seem to fail pretty readily. Um, so the main point of this video is that these things, these take zone valves, you're not supposed to just replace without um, understanding how they work because if you take it off the wrong point or it's it's active when it's not supposed to be active then um you might run into trouble well i guess that you know if you take one off that's that's bad you're not gonna screw it up but if you're putting a new one on and you activate it when it shouldn't be activated then you're gonna screw it up so personally my recommendation is go up and turn the heat off right set your thermostat to off not calling for heat or turn if it's a mercury switch one turn it all the way counterclockwise so that it's like you know down around 50 or whatever below the house temperature and then that's going to deactivate the the connection one of the connections to this and then turn off the power to the furnace so my house i've put that on there some houses um, you might have to you might have to hunt for the switch, but for me it's obvious. So now the, one of the main points of this video is that there's this heater element in here and usually you can feel these things getting hot. You can't just turn off the switch and pop this thing off. This comes off counterclockwise um, because this there's this mechanical system in there that apparently heats this grease. That's what this other YouTube video shows. So there's a heater wrapped around a little grease-filled piston. And as the heater heats the grease, it extends the piston. And when the heater turns off, when it's when the house is, when the system is no longer calling for heat, then the the grease cools off and the piston retracts and this thing goes back. So one of the points of the video is to wait. Be you're supposed to wait like a couple minutes for this whole thing to cool off. To be sure that the the system is in sort of a neutral position so that you, when you pop the thing off you can pop the thing off um so you know uh, hopefully by now everybody that's watching this has got a smartphone in their pocket take a picture of the way the the wires are put on there's three terminals 
just snap a photo of it so that you can put them back on the same way. This is a um, 570 series. This is a 571-2, and this is a 571-3. Apparently all the 570 series power heads are the same. Um, they're interchangeable. That's uh, not something I'm 100% certain of, but it's what I've seen posted online. So as good as that, you know, as good as that recommend, recommendation can be, um, that's what I understand. You don't have to buy the whole valve. Like if you're, if you got one of these Taco Zone valves and it's and it's acting up, all you need is a power head. This, in my experience, this valve body that actually controls the water flow is super reliable whereas the power head that's opening and closing the valve body is is not so um so get yourself another power head luckily when they replaced my furnace i had them leave me the old valves um and it turns out that the the valves these parts are not really of any need to me because they they're not failing but the power heads have been have been useful now twice so, you know, I'm kind of dragging this out because I want this thing to cool off. It's still warm to the touch, but it's not hot like it is when it's operating, when it's when, it's, when the system's calling for heat. So I've got a, I'm making this video. I'm gonna take a picture of these wires here in the order that they are. And then the way that you take this thing off is just rotate it. It just, it's just, it's got two mounting screws and they, they sit in there and they just, it just rotates, you know, like a 16th of a turn or whatever. And pop it off once it's cool. Unwire your wires. These have some doubles because it's jumpered from the first Taco valve, but just take your wires off put the wires on the new power head the same way that they were get the uh, the posts lined up and turn it in um, there's this manual open valve which and uh, all right oh, yeah we knew there was forgetting some so this manual open valve you see how it says open. This is a forced open. Uh, no, this yeah, this is a manual setting, and then you can see it says auto up here, and you can see this little lever that's activating. So you want to have it in an auto position. It's going to make it easier to mount this thing. We'll go right on. But the main point is not to. Not to have this power head off and, and live. We want to make sure that the thermostat's off and the power to the boiler's off. And then set the, if the lever's in the auto position already, then leave it there. If, it, if you've had to do something, some reason where you've had it down in the, in the open, the manual open position, um, put it back to the auto position and it'll pop right on and off. But you're not going to screw anything up. All right, that's the end. So just rewire the wire the new one up according to the way this one's wired up. Put it back on, and everything should be fine.